Hey everyone, this is a super special video because it's going to feature myself, Okadrian, and also Hauka. I am Hauka. And how we're launching and starting an extra stream bi-weekly based on community ideas and feedback. But let's say you say, hey, I want mounts in the game. That's all you. And we're going to address and answer some things this week. This one was recent as of nine days ago from Brutal, who said, but more to come. We encourage you to watch the video. Please enjoy. Well, uh, I guess we'll do the introductions. This is going to be on VOD for all of you watching. Uh, I'll decide what point it cuts in. We'll see. Got some room for error here. But uh, for anybody that doesn't know, my name is Okadrian. I'm the community and social media manager here at Blankhands. Hello. Welcome. Nice to meet you. Then over there, we got a... But you i am hauke uh my i'm one of the founders of the company i used to be officially creative director of corbon i would dare to say that that is now more rob's job and i am now though i guess it is still okay to say the lead of the asia pacific team required for narration as i'm the only narrative designer now and I also do a little bit of everything. I think that's what you said, literally everything. Yeah. Like currently I work on external pitches, which is something studios do. I work on the direction of the Asia Pacific team, which we'll hear a lot about in today's stream. And I think that's generally it. But I'm also still involved with Corborn, work on the game directly and indirectly. I'm really happy you mentioned that too, just to clear up any confusion of people wondering, you know, is Hauke still attached to the Corborn project? Seen a lot of little side yes. projects going on here. Is he is he still involved? Yeah, 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 no, no, no. I am still. Just like I think, um, I talked about that a lot on other interviews on my own stream and everything. And I think it was mentioned on this stream sometimes. Mm -hmm. After the release, we realized that there's been a significant shift to the main team, basically being located almost exclusively in the European zone or close to that time zone. Uh, I think you, Ari, and me are currently the only employees not in that time zone. I think so. Um, plus, of course, we have outsourcing studios, but even though I think, yeah, they are also in Ukraine, they do have some people outside of Ukraine, but also men, mainly European time zone, which led to us trying other things, not only with the people outside of the time zone, but also generally as a studio, we have to think ahead into the future and try other things. We tried Hollywood Escape, some UEFN projects, which were incredibly fun to work on. I would say from a workflow perspective, I wish working in Unreal would feel like that, that fast and easy. On the other hand, though, you release into an environment at UEFN where we were not super familiar with, which was a cool learning, but also showed us that, hey, maybe it makes more sense to develop a new strategy for what the Asia Pacific team does, because that is what their team did for a while basically Ari and me plus a third person that we're also going to go into more detail about in a moment um, has been, we have been working on other things and are now working on Corborn again. Perfect. And with that in, in mind, since we cleared all that up, we have a document board. We're going to showcase to all of you. So when you're watching at home, you can follow along and it's, it's like being back in school. It's your PowerPoint presentation. It's your first day of class. We're going to walk you through everything. Take the next five seconds to wait for this scene to finish transferring over. So here we go. <laughs> oh, so long. <laughs> I told you. Oh, oh finally. Oh, all that for this. We made it. So good news. We did this first part already. The stream's starting. Welcome. So congrats to us. Big ups. And mm -hmm. uh, this is our visual board we'll be using probably for the rest of the streams too. So all of you watching can follow along on what it is we're looking to discuss this week is a bit more lengthy than usual because we're setting the groundwork for what's going to be covered in the future. So this will be a bit easier to follow in the future because you won't have this many threads to worry about. But essentially yeah. what we're going to do is get to the part about the explanation of this process, why it's being brought about, you know, the team behind it, how your ideas are incorporated, and the voting process, which is entirely relevant as well. So Hauke, if you wouldn't mind starting us off, what is it we're looking to accomplish and why? So what we are trying to accomplish is a more direct influence of community ideas on things that are actually in the short term visible in the game. Like that is a very complicated way of saying we want to achieve that it is 
easier to have an idea as someone who's playing this game that then actually makes it into the game, not as part of a gigantic update in the future, but in a short term with direct communication with our team. That, that is what we're trying to achieve, which leads, of course, to more content than is already coming to because, to be fair, one update a month is not bad for a small studio at all. So, yeah. Not at all. And I, I see, Riggs, you have an idea. I like your enthusiasm. We'll, we'll get to that. That's actually, if you look at the web down there, the very last thing. But it, write it down. Don't forget it. Keep it in front of you. You'll be here the entire time. So we'll, we'll get to that. But uh, yeah, what Halka basically explained is the idea of all of you have ideas. We love that. Let's put those ideas into action. And that's what kind of brought about this team too, is the idea of having the Asia Pacific team exclusively taking on the idea and the brunt of what is reasonable because we have an entire idea section in the discord and there's also we want to explain the process of what's different about this team versus usual and by usual i mean you post in the idea section and you have so many ideas and myself and michael and alex will tell you hey you know what we we get those ideas and we take them to the team and we do we we talk about these ideas all the time but this team is different in how that flow takes place with those ideas and like incorporating it into the game. So how could, how would you best go about explaining that? Um, yeah, I think with a little introduction, generally over the years that I've been working with and in games, there is the misconception that developing ge games is most of the time exciting. <laughs> and... <laughs> And I think there's a huge misconception for a lot of people when it comes to how long certain things take. Because every time I read this, like, this is pretty easy or this is super easy to do, I say, yeah, it is not at all. You cannot know that. So basically, our idea is that we as the Asia-Pacific team, in with as much transparency as is humanly possible, um, develop these ideas together with the community and do you already want me to lay out the flow? Maybe I'll explain first who is the Asia Pacific team. Yeah. In our studio, the Asia Pacific team is currently two people plus a third person that is hopefully going to join us very soon. Those three people are Eri, which is a lead game designer, someone who can not only work in engine and does have some coding knowledge, but also is just incredibly skilled in Unreal and generally in general has worked on huge titles. You've seen him on the stream before. And... Together with Eri, I think in the early stages of Corborn, we were the ones most familiar with the game and also most in charge of making decisions when it came to the game design of the game. So Eri knows the game quite well. The second person is me. <clears throat> I mainly currently work out of engine, but also I am transitioning to work in engine more. Sorry, I have to take a zip because I have like a... <clears throat> Ah, that's better. Um, nice. I do a lot of game design. I am a narrative designer, which means that I can write stories. I can do things around anything that is connected to the law. I originally wrote the law of the world. Of course, now a lot more people are working on it. Nice. Good catch. That is an annoying one. That was really uh, good. Sorry. <laughs> good catch. So, um, then, additionally... I also now work in engine, you could say set design level design, which is something that I'm at least somewhat familiar with. I'll just be honest, Unreal is not my best engine. I'm better in others, but it is the only one that I need to work in right now. So I just need to step up my game there. And also helping, of course, is that I do have some community management experience and I'm also one of the founders of the company. So it is a lot easier for me to just say, hey, let's just do this or that or anything. And the third person is going to be an environmental slash creature artist, someone who can build assets in engine that we then bring into the world to say it's simple. Someone, if we decide we're going to build a house, that person can make the 3D asset for that house. So what we don't have is a dedicated engineer. We do not have someone that only works in code, basically. Okay. Which is important to know. We also do not have an animator and we do not have an, 
have a real, like a full-time creature artist. That's just important because I'm going to explain in a moment how this team works together with you as a community. And I think it's important to understand what the capabilities of this team are. Good. So that explains the team that we're working with. And that's just the process of how you understand, all of you watching the community at home, that this is two teams, but all working on the same thing. So it isn't like this team is away from Coreborn. They're not. They're clearly working on Coreborn based stuff. It's just that this team of three people uh, in lieu with us communicating along the way is responsible for taking your ideas and finding out which ones are possible to create because you have the main team, which is following the roadmap, right? It's following the idea of what Coreborn is supposed to be, what it's going to be in like a month, two, three, four, five months. And that won't change. And that goes down to the idea of your ideas, pitch and selection. This team is specifically built around the idea of all of you want certain things in the game that are maybe even aligned with the roadmap, but are very specific and attuned to, hey, you know what? Roadmap looks good. I can't wait to play that. But I got to be honest with you. I just want to have some stone shoes. Like that's all I've wanted since day one. Just some granite shoes I can walk around in that make a clump clump sound. And we go, huh, mm -hmm. that could be quality of life. Good idea. We'll pass that along. And that's the idea of your ideas, pitch and selection is taking all of your ideas, which by the way, are not different than the ones in the discord. So there's not an idea section and yep. then a yeah, sub yeah. idea section. There's the ideas section, but the importance of this stream, which will be reoccurring and we'll get to that later on too, is bringing you all in here. If whether you're watching live or later on in VOD and having comments, and finding out what ideas make the most sense and then putting it to the team. And Palka, if you want to explain that process and how it's going to go. Mm -hmm. So basically, anyone that is on our Discord, part of the community, you can even use social media, just ping us in a tweet or whatever if you don't use anything else, can have a high-level idea. Like, the more high-level, the better. High-level meaning, if you say, I would love to see mounts in the game, I can and we'll go back to that example in a moment. That is better to me than you designing an excess or like an extensive document around the idea how that mounts work and everything. Because there's things we can and can't do. But let's say you say, hey, I want mounts in the game. We take that idea and then as the Asia Pacific team look at it from an angle, what is for us actually achievable? And we'll explain that process to you. Like, for example, at the example of mounts, I would say, hmm. Not only are we already working on something that is similar to mounts, but also that is too big to work on us, like for us, uh, to work on for us as the Asia Pacific team. Basically, too much animation, too much this, too much that, too much coding work. What we could do, for example, is a companion. He follows you around. He is like a chest. You can give him stuff and take it back from him. And potentially, once you walk next to him, you both walk faster. Quite similar to a mount, not exactly a mount. But that idea we would then develop together with all the others. Basically, if you give us 20 ideas, I look at these 20. For all of these, I make a minimum viable option that we as the Asia Pacific team could do and pitch them internally to our team because we do still work on Corborn. Corborn is a big game. There's almost 30 people working on it. And I do need to sync with other leads, especially with our other game designers. Um, what makes sense, like what is actually doable. Then we pitch those 20 ideas to them and we come back with three ideas that we think are close enough to what was originally suggested and still are fun and actually make sense within the game. And those three, that's what here on the board after your ideas is the pitch. Then comes the selection where we bring these three ideas back to you as a community and you can decide what we're going to build and we are going to build that. And that basically breaks it down. So you can see right there, I would like mounts. We take it to the team. Mm, you know what? Three people out of 30, a little big for team of three. It's a good idea though, because we don't want to throw away ideas. We simply want to refine them or find out what makes the most sense and what can be achieved in a certain amount of time. So you might have an idea that works out really well, but can't be done by a team of three in a matter of a few weeks or a month, but mm -hmm. maybe it can be done in three months. And if not by this team, then maybe to the main team, hey, can you add this onto your plate? And then we come back later on and say, hey, for now, we're doing this companion mini boost. If you like that, we can vote on that and see if that's one of the ones you want the most. And then later on, the idea is expanded. If it's one that's frequently used and makes the most sense for all of you who are taking advantage of it. So there you go. 
And that's how it's going to work. And that's the voting process. So when we have these streams, when we have the idea bunching, choose the ones that make the most sense with the team, come back to you and say, all right, cool. We heard all of you. These are the three, four or five that we think will be the ones that are most possible. Which one do you all think? And that's the most important part is you get the autonomy over it. So maybe your idea didn't make the cut right away, but these are the best ideas. And we talked about this. It's not about eliminating the others. It's the one that's the most valuable for everyone involved right now. So if we have a list of three ideas we came back with and number two is the one that won, that's the main focus. But the other two don't just get trashed. They just get added back to the list later on. So when we do the list the following two weeks later or a month later, hey, we're back. These two ideas are still here. Here are the ideas we narrowed down again. Now it's this list. Maybe those two previous ideas, one of those is now the favorite out of the entire group. Mm -hmm. And that becomes the focus point. So it's not about eliminating as much as it is about organizing which one yep. is the best fit for everyone at the time of the request. Simple. Yeah, I think that's a very good way of putting it. There's also already ideas coming in, but I think there's more that we need to explain first, then we can <laughs> gladly like go over these examples. Because I would like this, because you already said it, Adrian, like, this is going to be a regular thing. We're going to do these streams regularly. And actually, I would love to explain more to you guys why certain things are achievable or yeah. they are not achievable. Because I think it helps a lot to understand. Because you need to see this like this community content team as this is your little tool to get things in that usually couldn't make it in because it's not like our main team doesn't care about your ideas it's just <laughs> the game as a whole has so many areas that we still need to work on that do not function as well as they should we still want to like for example the last rework is a great example very few people would have said oh can you please rework the building can you please do something about the combat in like small... I mean, combat actually was brought up often, but it is just so much work to work these over. Like combat took weeks and months of work from engineers and game designers. The whole building system is 3D work. Like same thing, weeks and months. And that's sadly usually what it is. And so here we hope that people understand why we do smaller things. And to make that more visible we will additionally bring in test servers. I hope it's okay that I transition over to yeah, that. Yeah, perfect. Did, okay. Test servers will be something that is available to everyone who plays Corborn. They will most likely launch around mid next week. I don't want to be specific because there's always still a lot of open questions, um, but expect them around mid next week, unless there's something coming up that makes us have to delay it. These test servers serve the purpose of being test servers for feedback but also for us gathering playable like play data like how do you use the features we're building what problems are you running into and stuff like that how to access them we'll explain on the discord it will most likely be a very simple beta basically where you can just put in a code in your game and then you can access them there's no restrictions these server servers might be region locked and they will as you already put like type and resets Depending on the feature we're testing, and I'll just give a, an example, we are currently as the Asia Pacific team working on farming as a feature, which means growing crops in your towns. Um, it's a very minimum version as we're a small team, but <laughs> you will be able uh. to grow things. You need to water them after a while you can harvest them and gain resources from that. I mean, I think we already mentioned that in, in one stream that we're, but like, if, if, let's say it's a reveal, <laughs> big reveal. Um, in those cases, it makes sense for us to keep the servers running. They are online most of the time. You can jump in whenever because there's, of course, time gaps where these plants are growing actively. And then that makes sense. There might be other things where we do a feature where focus testing makes a lot more sense, where we say, hey, makes no sense to keep the servers running. We do a focus test at, well, I don't know, 8 p.m. European time tomorrow then the servers are on for two hours and then they're offline again. Depends very much on what is being currently tested. These servers will therefore see resets whenever we see fit. I know it's frustrating, but it is testing. I do not care. I reset servers <laughs> whenever I need to. These are test servers. If I need data, I don't care. I'm going to personally delete someone's town just so that I get the data I need. We will, of course, 
set warnings if possible. If not, it is a test server. As I said, they are not meant for the full game experience and progress. They might even in some cases not have certain features or you might see features that you're not able to properly play yet. Like there might be animations missing, gray boxes in it. It is testing. I'm so happy you brought that up too. There have been so many times in the back end where I've had like little miniature towns I'm so proud of. Like, oh man, this is actually pretty good. I'm going to work on this. Yeah. And then it resets and I'm like, oh, you got to be kidding me. I was, I was hoping to at least copy that down. I guess not. Yeah, yeah. So y'all can get used to that too. Don't fall in love with it, basically. If it's testing, don't fall in love with it. It is, it is. Like, also, it might be that in some cases, we will do our best to regularly update. I think for people who've been part of the Hollywood escape process, um, there's sometimes been updates three times, four times a day. And then we generally send a short log, say, hey, this is what's going to happen. This is what changed. This is the goal of the current testing. Hey, please focus your testing on this feature. Try to do this. Like with farming, for example, it could be that we say, hey, try to grow your crops as fast as possible. We might ask specifically for feedback on certain features. There might be, like as we already did, surveys in there where we then point out, please answer the sur survey after every session and be honest about it because it just helps us. Yeah. And, uh, you know, if you can ahead of time, just try to be as succinct as possible. Keep it within uniform of what makes the most sense to communicate. I, a couple of times you test things, I've tested things and your world in your head starts expanding like, ooh, that was fun. I wish I had this mm -hmm. and this and this and this. And I get it. It's an explosion of ideas and it feels good, but compartmentalize that and you have to say to yourself, what, what makes the most sense out of what I've seen and what I've tested? Yeah, yeah. Dr. Like Sharkey. It's a great learning question. from Hollywood Escape. The simpler and more straightforward like feedback is, the more it usually helps us. Telling me I did not like this level, it wasn't fun, is sometimes more valuable to me than you trying to analyze why you didn't have fun. I like it. Dr. Sharky asks, so we'll get a code like alpha and beta download, basically a new game and test the bejesus out of it? Yes, you will basically have to jump between these two. The main reason for that, I know that it would be more convenient if you could uh, download like a second version and you have like Corborn and Corborn test that is potentially viable for the future it does cost us more resources and we would like to see first if people actually make use of the test feature so you need to imagine it you do need to every time you want to jump between the live environment and the test environment you will have to download the game again yes that is the case i know especially for people in germany with absolute garbage internet that sadly sucks for everyone else it's a 15 minute inconvenience but yeah Great question, by the way. Yeah, it's a very good question, yeah. So that explains the test servers, when it's happening, the type, the resets, the region. Like you mentioned, it could be uniform, it could be one age, could be only two, we'll figure it out, we'll let you know when. We'll have it shared everywhere, you won't be left in the dark about that. Uh, the closing is probably going to be the longest part of this, maybe about half the time, really, which is the frequency and future expectations. And what that basically means is, as this first starts out, we're looking at about bi-weekly. And as I pointed out in the news posting on uh, Discord, this is not meant to replace the weekly blank hand stream that will still be going, going, going on Thursdays, 1.30 p.m. Eastern at 7.30 p.m. CET. That's still going to happen. This is just going to be an accompaniment that takes place on Mondays every other week, an hour earlier today. This was just a little test run, a little briefer, but time that you showed up today whatever time zone you were in imagine this one hour earlier and that'll be our grouping time now i mentioned that for future expectations because the idea is to do this bi-weekly for the idea gathering but as we start gathering ideas as that backlog starts finishing up that could be moved to a monthly thing because we start to analyze the idea of it's been four meetings now so we're two months down the line now we have this list of ideas and we're trying to implement the ones from two meetings ago. So it may not make sense to have a bi-weekly meeting to discuss the things we just discussed two weeks ago. It could be just recycling information, a little feedback loop, mm -hmm. waste of your time, maybe ours, we could be focused on other stuff instead. So the meeting frequency will be allocated based on what's necessary, but you'll always be kept updated on when that's going to take place. And we'll still be discussing it and still letting you know what's happening and when the testing is happening as well. So simple. Yeah. 
also it might depend on the feature that's been chosen, right? Like for example, farming, once you get to test it around next week, you will feel like this is very basic, like super basic gameplay feature. And it already took us around nine weeks to build that super basic version. Because currently we are two people. And to be fair, mainly Ari is building by himself. Because I do not have the knowledge to help at this stage much outside of game design, which I did. And after that, I basically lean back and do other things while Ari has to do all the work. And then I come here and say, hey, look what we have built. <laughs> and... <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, we put our best in there. Good job, and, us. <laughs> yeah, good job, us. Ha, high five me. <laughs> and yeah, that is like in some cases, it might be that, hey, community, you guys chose a feature that just took us four weeks. Cool. We actually might do more updates, or you chose something that takes us four or five months to build, which I would highly advise against. And also, maybe to be transparent, we will always try to come up with a feature that has an estimate around maybe eight to 12 weeks just to be able to kind of build something again in the near future and not end up and being stuck at gigantic things that then never really satisfy because yeah we just don't have the resources cool uh and if any of you have any questions you can ask them now uh and in time with that we'll also go into the idea portion this could be your mm -hmm. idea right here it's true. Riggs, that idea I told you to hold on to, you can bring it out now. Hopefully you wrote it down or didn't forget it. I do see earlier there were a couple that were already mentioned, like one from Forza, who said, I would like to teleport between my towns, even if it was restricted with a cooldown or a consumable. Thoughts? So I would say that will most likely be possible already technically in the game i I'll, i'm very much guessing here because that is one of those questions where i would have to speak to an engineer first i will definitely would personally link it to something that is game related because currently and i'll just be transparent again i think our game lacks burns for materials i think most people who play the game regularly will realize like a lot of your chests are full of stuff that you never need to put anywhere and as frustrating as it might feel to have to pay for something, it just brings more fun into a survival game if you actually spend resources on stuff. So that is potentially possible. I think my first question in that case, now that you're here live too, is is teleporting what you're looking for? You just want to personally be somewhere else? Or is it about being able to bring resources somewhere else? Just so I understand better. Like, would you put all your gear, like your inventory full and you want to teleport there? Or do you just want to physically be somewhere else on a map? Great question. My idea changed into a question. <laughs> okay, oh. that's not so fun. <laughs> okay, you can, you can go ahead and ask your question if you like, by the way. Dr. Sharky, you had a idea pitch which is a frequent one, you want daggers. <laughs> that is... So I will just give you a vague <laughs> estimate how long it would take the Asia-Pacific team to build playable daggers in this game. And I'm not trying to be crass. I would say that is roughly 14 months of work, minimum. Like we would build more than a year with three people to bring playable daggers into this game, most likely. If we're super fast, things are going great. Outsourcing is super, maybe nine months to have even a minimum viable version of this weapon. Like that is, so that's something where I could now say, oh, that's the main team. The main team has to build weapons. I don't want to give away too much, but there is currently an internal idea that would allow this to be faster. So my most likely reply pitch to this would be, how about you don't use weapons, but someone else does? Like, you Ooh. play something that uses daggers for a while instead of your main character, because that immediately makes it easier for me. I do not need to do all the animation work. I could make it a lot easier. I could only have one character that, like, a, let's say a rook, he has daggers. He only can do three attacks. Still a shitload of work. Most likely way too much for the AP team. But already more in scope we brought it down to three to four months already <clears throat> and if i simplify it further that could be a way to bring bring daggers but 
your main character using daggers as a different weapon mm, that's too big for the AP team. I'll just be completely honest because we do not have an animator on our team and that is mainly animation work. Very thorough answer. Thank you. Riggs, uh, I'll sub answer your question as we get to it. Is there a feature from a past MMO that you love that isn't currently being utilized in MMOs today and would you ever consider implementing it? I'll step in really quickly to remind everyone because not everyone knows this too. And I think part of that too is because we start off earlier, I think it's team used in the tag for it. But Corporate is not an MMO. It's not set up in a system where you have different classes that are doing quests, that are doing dungeons, that are going from area to area in quest progression the along the way with gear progression along the way. It's meant to be social survival in the same way that you would play a Rust, a Subnautica, a Minecraft, a Conan Exiles, uh, a Valheim, uh, all those games like that, where you put in a situation where you have to survive, you gather materials to survive, to build a shelter to survive, to upgrade your gear while exploring the world that may or may not have world-based lore invited into it, where maybe you can do a certain quests that are meant to reward you as you socialize with others, but there's not a level system along the way where one level impairs you, so to speak, from accessing one port of information, questly speaking, I guess, or dungeon-wise, if that makes sense. But I don't yeah, think it I also... Think... Oh, so go ahead. Yeah, sorry. No, no, I was about to go back to the whole outpost teleporting thing because we just got an ah, answer yeah. from Forest, for, for, forest here. For, nice. For, for, for. Um, I want to be able to have outposts to get around the map a hut near the mountains, one near bandits, one near good resource farming spot. So I think the first thing that I generally do not disagree with is it's good that it's from town to town. Because what I wouldn't like is I can just teleport back to my town once my inventory is full and everything. Not a big fan of that. I personally think earning resources makes them more valuable than just getting them. And so it's just more fun to walk into the mountains and have to bring resources back. So I already like the general idea of, ah, I can only teleport between towns. So I at least have to set up a town in the mountains to be able to go easily between mountains and back and forth. Um, I think it would require some form of cost, which we could then look into. It might also be that my counter suggestion in that case would be something like, hey, how about there's something like teleport stones? and everyone can teleport to them from a different teleport stone, for example, as long as they have upkeep and that upkeep is paid. Because that's something we could potentially do. Like it's kind of like a town, there's a little settlement somewhere, it's NPC controlled, you go up there, all the whole server puts stuff in it. Once it's active, everyone can teleport to it. Once you have a structure that allows you to teleport to it, but you cannot teleport from that back to something else. And that teleport thing is in your town. So you can not only teleport between your towns, but you can also jump to different locations. That is something that could potentially be doable. I mean, I don't know, hard to say for now. The simpler it is, like let's say you can teleport between towns. It costs resource X, like say condensed crystals. And the more you use it, the more expensive it gets. It kind of like gets higher and higher, higher the cost. And then at some point it drops again two months maybe or like right between eight to 12 weeks that would be an absolutely viable suggestion for the ap team most likely like i would always have to go back to the team talk to them and there might be something else but technically i would say that is a very good idea i think it's funny that you bring that up too a rather interesting between both of you halka and forza because Riggs, back to what you said i bring that up not to completely dismiss what you were asking it was mostly just to explain MMO versus social survival because your question still has merit because the very thing we're talking about, I remember, was a feature in the MMO Final Fantasy XI where there were mm -hmm. certain outposts you would go to who were in very difficult locations to get to. But if you're one of the three nations, Windurs, Pestok, Sandoria, if your nation had won throughout the week conquest points, the most conquesting, you, didn't, you died to the fewest monsters, you killed the most, your team could claim outposts for that week, which meant that only your team member nations were able to transport and teleport to those outposts in oftentimes dangerous areas, whereas the other people had to walk there the entire time. And I think that maybe it's an example of what you were speaking about, where that is a good MMO feature that could go into a social survival game, even though it's not an MMO. So with that being said, Hauka, do you think there is a feature, I guess, from an MMO from a past that you would like to implement into social survival, Coreborn? 
uh, social quests. Um, I was you originally uh, highly against social like quests in general, and I think I was a little not stupid but naive. Like we had an idea for doing something that is very different. Um, but personally, I love social quests. I love them in Guild Wars, for example. I think they worked great. There's a lot of MMOs that have them or had them in some form. Like Warhammer Online had regional social quests that chained into each other. I think something similar happened in Guild Wars 2. I love them. I think they would be a great addition. They are similar to the events I always imagined. Not saying the Asia-Pacific team can build them. I'm just saying that is something that is potentially something I would love to build because also they offer a chance to narrate your world, give some more lore. You can bring characters in that actually serve a purpose and you passively learn something about the environment you're in. So quests slash social quests is something I would love to do in some capacity, but I'm not the community. So <laughs> I, I can only hope that someone suggests that and then I pick it and make it the best idea to try to influence the pitch. But yeah. I would agree. But that's something I would love to see. But I think it's a good point that you bring up that this is not because maybe that's also interesting. As game designers, sometimes we try to read more into something that you're asking for than you actually might think. For example, the moment you say, I want to be able to teleport between towns, what I'm hearing is not that you want to travel between towns, but that traveling is boring in our game. And that you try to skip an activity and my job and my approach if it was for me to decide what to do now would be how do i make traveling more interesting mm -hmm. which could be random encounters which could be some form of amount or anything that makes it more fun for you to travel between two points and i think that is often where the disconnect between studios and their community comes where they think no one is listening to them and we are listening we're just trying to stay in line with our original game design because making a survival game more convenient is in my opinion not always the best idea especially if you do not have as much content as a gigantic sandbox like minecraft has but it is also kind of not the smartest move to completely dismiss what community asks for and that's why we set up this team because we felt like hey maybe it makes sense to not look for the hidden meaning but give direct impact Yep. I think that's been one of the challenges I've seen since I've arrived here. And I think all of you have made it much easier. When we first started off, there's the idea that it can't always be too easy, right? But it can't be too hard. And that's a very delicate balance of I'm having so, it's so hard to find all the epic resources I have or some of the uncommon resources. I've been mining for hours and I don't get them. So what's the best way to do it? You increase the drop rate. Maybe not the best tool because everyone gets them. You increase the gear accessibility and maybe not so much. What was the idea? You have vendors, quality vendors, people you can go to, which you just trade in resources. And part of that too, I remember seeing on the discord and the steam reviews came from the idea of people suggesting, what if there was someone you could trade into or like an, an alchemist mm -hmm. who can melt things down and, and bring it about. So I think that was one of the good times where we have an idea, you have an idea, it's meshed and everyone says, oh, this is kind of what we want. And it's still always a work in progress too, but that's the whole point of these meetings right here taking place is us saying, how can we meet in the middle? You want better transportation between towns. We can't do direct teleportation. We can't do mounts yet. So what can we do? Outpost warping? That's a fantastic idea. I like that as well. I would love to be able to go to a specific point in the map and just go, okay, I can be there for now. And that works for me. I'm at least closer to the point that I want to be in the first place. I love that. So great suggestion. Yeah, keep it up. Keep your ideas uh, rolling in here too. And for any of you who are watching right now on VOD right now, uh, same thing. If this is on YouTube, drop your ideas in the comments section. We'll have them there as well. If you'd rather not do it on YouTube, you can always go to our Discord. You know, address is right down there, discord.gg forward slash blank hands. And you can bring them to the ideas section on the Discord as well. Ah! A question that's probably a little heaven idea too. Where are we with new expeditions? So we are further than you might think. I would say that we have developed the idea. I mean, I don't want to give main timelines because just things move around. The main team is working on expeditions. 
and they are already not only on our roadmap, but there's already pre-work and development going on on expeditions. I would say we are doing the smart thing and basically looking at the feature right now from different angles and say, hey, what's the best way to bring them in? That also makes them replayable and gives the maximum content that can come out of them and fun, most of all. I would say it depends. No, that's actually, no, that's already a pretty good answer. I would say it's like, yeah, because like all the technical setup is there, right? Like as much as people might not have liked Capture the Crown or liked it or whatever, it was good because it showed us that our general server environment works for anything that is on a separate server, players get matchmaked, no matter of their current server or whatever, where they line up from. So that's great. That works. We know that we're capable of doing that. We know that we're capable of sending you back to your home server. We know that inventory management works, everything. That's good. Super cool. So we we already have a lot of the groundworks needed. I think it's very much game design, which is one of our main bottlenecks currently. Because we do need to design good expeditions. Then we have to actually build them, set them up, make them accessible. So I think... Yeah, that's the answer. We are, where are we standing with expeditions? We are working on them. I just don't want to give a date because date moves around, right? They, uh, dates move around. What if something changes? That is game development. Like I thought with farming that today we would basically be done and move to playtesting, but then something comes along and things just change. Actually, uh, uh, oh, another question. Good job, Grace, right away. We had a GRP feature in the alpha for joining the server. Are these coming back for expeditions or mining social features? Can you can you say that again? Maybe I misunderstand the question or I don't understand it. I don't myself. Uh, it was on this topic. Oh yeah, on that topic, we had a GRP group feature in the alpha for joining the server. Ah, the group feature. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the, so... Basically, as it often is in game development, the group feature caused a problem because we were using a plugin, I think, to do it, or like a very barebone version. And it caused a lot of problems when we introduced the ideas of proper player IDs, I think. And that is why we took it out, because there was so much that didn't work in it that we decided it's better to not have it than to have whatever this is. Because you could not click on someone and chat with them. You could not teleport to their server. Like so many things did not work around grouping as we had built it that we had to push it out. And then so far, it just didn't make it back in because the advantages grouping give you from a gameplay perspective in the current game are incredibly small compared to the effort we need to put in to make grouping a thing. So basically what happens is in those cases that a game design is being made that actually gives them a purpose in the game, then we get an estimate, and that estimate is usually a few weeks in those cases because a bigger feature that has more impact actually requires more work. And that's why it's been pushed out because we just said, if we want grouping to be in some way meaningful, that's when that happens. If you want grouping, you can suggest grouping. I'll look at it with the community team like the Asia Pacific team looks at it, we see what's doable or what isn't. We might have to dismiss it or change the idea or whatever. I just don't know by the top of my head, to be honest. I think it will require too much networking for us. I might completely be wrong about that. And it's actually something that would be achievable for us. Cool. While we wait for more questions from people in the chat as we wind down to the time, because this is the introduction to the idea of what we're looking to do, I will take maybe one or two from the communications channel we've been keeping open, keeping track of all the ones you suggested over time. This one was recent as of nine days ago from Brutal, who said, I think it would be cool if you could change the image on the wooden chest afterwards. For example, you could add a tab for symbols next to the storage. Because that makes sense, because as of right now, when you look to select your wooden chest, you have to select it ahead of time. Is this going to be one we store for plant, for foraging, for it's like geocasting or everything else but that crate may change its identity later on and we need it for something else and now it can no longer be the crate is set up to and a subtopic of that that's 1a 1b if you expand the idea of the wooden chest you could think about different wooden chests depending on the type of wood or option which also makes sense because as you build a town and as you use planks 
we offer different types of wood there. So why not on the chest as well? Both are absolutely viable. Both would be doable by the Asia Pacific team. I personally would more argue build a second chest, whoever has enough chests. <laughs> huh? But like, <laughs> absolutely viable ideas. I think in the second case, especially, we will have a 3D artist in the very near future, hopefully. So most likely not going to be that hard to achieve for us. I would almost dare to say it is almost too bare bone, but nothing is too minimalistic. That just means faster iteration. So yeah, absolutely viable. That is done. I, that is doable. Sorry, that's what I meant. I like that. It makes sense. <laughs> yeah, Greece, you agree, huh? Just build more chests. There you go. <laughs> I mean, maybe that's just me, but I would just throw down a second chest, move that shit in there, and just have one more chest. No, this chest is important to me. You know, maybe we'll do that. Maybe the chest can level up. It gains personality traits. She become really attached to it. Oh my god! I, if it was for me, everything should have personality traits in oh, the game, and man, you get attached to it. You can name your chest too. That was so good. Oh. And then you grow with them, and you have a personal story. And like they, once you take something from them, they're like, no, no, that's my favorite <laughs> present. <laughs> it snitches on people like apes. Yesterday, yeah. someone took your outfit, bro. Yesterday, like. Exilius came and like, took all the food out of me. Like, <laughs> I remember that one time that Halka did that to me during a holiday stream. Hey, bygones never happened. It's okay. <laughs> and I took all the, all the skins. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Didn't forget. <clears throat> and the chest can walk behind you while you farm. It's funny you mentioned that. We did mention that earlier yep. as a solution to mounting. And honestly, there are games that offer different minion types. Maybe we can do that too. Maybe you can have as one of your storage companions, it could be a, a, ch a chest. Why not? It would technically be possible like in those cases. Let's say, let's try to make this into how would that actually work. In those cases, I would most likely say we do have a Juristograph. The Juristograph already has an idle animation. So at least there's something there. Or I look at the Jibbling because Jibblings can already walk and everything because animation is costly it takes a lot of time it is one of the most expensive things in game making so basically we could then say hey that's two jibblings carrying a chest or one jibbling with a backpack or whatever he follows you around you can put stuff in him like in any other container of course there's a shitload of failure potential we're like <laughs> what happens if you travel the map or like if you server travel if you go to Korheim, what if you have a disconnect what if this what if that what if you die million like a million things that can go wrong but for all of these solutions could be found it is technically possible that a jibbling follows you around he's a chest and you can interact with him and only you can it would require a lot more game design slash testing work so i think there would kind of quickly be a testable version but it would take us a whole while until we have a version where we're all happy and say that can move into the game. So absolutely technically viable. I like it. Uh, well, we want to take like one more. Since so this is the like introduction stream to get the idea of what's happening and set the expectations. We'll grab one more for the community notes. Is that good with you? Sorry, can you say it again? You want to, should I grab one or two more from the community notes? Yes. And we'll call I'd it a stream. To. Okay, perfect. Uh, Mr. Olivander typed out, it would be nice if all the workbenches had jibblings and when they had nothing to do, they could walk around in the town instead of just waiting for work. Maybe we could ask also build beds for them to increase their working speed. There could also be jibblings who finish the blueprints with materials from the chest in the town. And I think part of this made it came from the stream that we did last week where David revealed the animation we had for a jibbling that showcases that someone is currently working on that station. So you're not left wondering, right. is this occupied? So yes, there is already work going on on making jibblings actively working on stations. Jibblings walking around your town. I think that's one of the things where I once read that that is quite easy. It is not easy at all. <laughs> but <laughs> if the more willing you are to accept flaws, the easier something gets, right? If it's like they clip through everything, nothing looks good, and like, oh, yeah, that's very easy. Like a clipping, buggy, jibbling, walking around your door. Absolutely. 
if it needs to be the exact same jibbling and it has individual features already like 20 times more complex i'm not saying it's impossible i would in the, it's another case of where i would in one of these streams explain what makes such an idea complex jibblings just so the jibbling just walking around your tone easy the jibbling from your station disappearing at your station <laughs> and walking around your town already a million times more complex because currently our stations do have states like working non-working which is cool we already know that exists we would have to build a third state which is idle basically the jibbling is there but not doing anything we would then have to make a chain of like hey this is random at some points that chain does all doable i'm not saying impossible i'm just saying more complex the jibbling needs pathfinding now it needs to know where stuff is we do have pathfinding theoretically it is kind of meh though that's one reason why town attacks do not feel as rewarding as they should currently because they sometimes see structures sometimes they don't let's say we are willing to accept that that doesn't work perfectly like they sometimes clip through things or whatever if this would be given to the asia pacific team i would say please let us not make it the crafting station jibblings. Let's say it is different jibblings or different creatures. There's a specific spot you give them. Let's say they have a little hut. You build a jibbling hut. Mm. They come out of that hut and walk around your town. Immediately, I would say that is a million times easier and more doable for us as an Asia Pacific team. Just to, uh, the more things are linked with other features, the better they get, but the harder they get to execute. But again, I might completely be wrong. I speak to an engineer or another game designer, and they say, "Auge bullshit, super easy, no problem at all." <laughs> Dude has no <laughs> idea what he's talking about. He's just talking out loud. We can do that. Easy. Consider it done. Yeah, yeah. Well, like I said, whenever I read someone saying this is so easy, another game does it. I'm like, yeah, of course, because yeah, you you've eaten our code and know it by a hand. That's one of the things I've learned in this position is, I mean, I've always watched documentaries on devs and the process of what it takes to just do the smallest incremental thing, but now actually being part of a game and me thinking like, man, it'd be so much easier if we just did this one thing. And then I watched the conceptualization. I watched the concept art. I watched the 3D mold. I watched the animation. I watched the testing. I watched the uh-oh of something clipping down somewhere else. And that can't happen not only there, but not everywhere. And how much all that time takes with 30 people. And I'm like, Boy, oh boy, this is a lot for what seemed like a very small yeah. thing. That's also why I often try to explain to people like a five person indie studio works, let's say, at speed one. That does not mean that 10 people work at speed two, because the more people you are, the more you need to align ideas and visions. You need to make clear what you're working on. More and more gears start like going into each other, and it just like, gets harder and harder. Because let's say we do have this little hut, we need a concept for it. The Asia Pacific team does not have a concept artist. No problem. We can absolutely either outsource the concept or we gather some external art. But then we need to tell that to our 3D artist, explain the idea, or just follow their vision. They have to tell someone in animation about their vision so they know where the door is and where the jibbling comes out. We need to tell that to Ari so that he can set up the perfect spot, need the perfect timing, and so on and so forth. And like everything needs something, right? I need to make a recipe for that house. How much HP does the house have? When do creatures attack it? Do they not attack it? Is it expensive enough so it's not exploitable? It cannot have that much like, more XP than a building wall. It is all so much more complex than it seems in a game like ours. Agreed. Cool. If any of you don't have any more questions who are watching right now, I'll take one more from the ones I've been gathering lately. And this one is from Momentai, who said, it would be cool if you could somehow save your existing bills as blueprints. So that way, if you decide to just up and take your town somewhere else, you could simply take down and put your blueprint and say, here's what I've already built once. I just need all this light wood, all this stone and all this. Kaploom, it's done. My town's moved. Thoughts? Kill me. <laughs> ah, the worst one, huh? So it is like, that's a super good idea. I love it. I think it should I absolutely agree. be there. I would have to deep dive with our engineers to understand <laughs> best. So but I'll try to explain the problem as easy as it is. Currently, 
even if it might not feel like it, Corbon is a very well running game, considering how much you're allowed to build on a server with how many people. And like, we save it all, it's all on the server, cool. Let's say you're allowed to build, like, plan these blueprints. A blueprint is technically to us still data. No difference to a wall. Let's just say, like, good, they don't have states, a little easier. It's, we can optimize all of that. But as soon as the word optimize comes up, it is more work. I need to hand it to engineers. They need weeks to optimize it. Cool. But let's say we, that's possible. I save my house, put them down as blueprints somewhere. While you save that blueprint, it is saved somewhere. Of course, I could say, let's move that to the client side. That is maybe a good uh, client side means your side. Like you save that data. It's saved somewhere. And next time you want to set it up, you put down these blueprints. The second you put these blueprints down, I allow you to basically spam a shitload of blueprints in a very short amount of time into our server that we need to save and handle. And suddenly they do move from your side to our side. And that is all doable. There can be thresholds to make that not as easy or not as problematic, but it is not an easy thing. I am not saying it's a bad idea. I'm not saying it is impossible. I'm just saying that is too big. I don't think the Asia Pacific team would be the right thing for that. But as I said, I do not want to send ideas back to you. So I will always come up with a suggestion what we could instead do. What we could potentially, for example, do is do something like how about there is at least some form of faster blueprint management where there is something where you can plan something or like the community can suggest things and then there is a basic hut. And the basic hut is just like four foundations, walls around it with windows. I put that down, the blueprints are there, cool. It's just sitting there waiting to be placed. I know it's not what you are looking for I because you want to, of course, like make your personal creation fit into that environment but it is at least a suggestion and then additionally and i know i want like that seems tiny but we do currently not have a system to manage several blueprints and their recommend uh, their requirements at once so you know when you put down a blueprint and it suddenly becomes red you cannot place that here but that's individually handled per blueprint we would have to completely restructure building that in a way that if I set several down, some of them get placed and some of them don't. What happens with like the whole system of structural integrity? Like if the foundation isn't placed, do the walls then not get... You know what I mean? There is so much connected to that. It is super complex on the mathematical side of engineering. No, that totally makes sense. I mean, I like the idea you have too, because some people, uh, Grish, have said before, no matter, even though they're really smart, Grish, have said they're not the most creative builders. So the idea of coming into a game and saying, I, I'm i watching all these builds and I can't do that, but I want to I wanna have a hut to start off with. I like the idea as well, just saying, <clears throat> here are three huts you can choose from, plant them down, you have something to get you started with. But yeah, there's always that fear if I want to build next to this small body of water it says it's green cool i build it it's built the roof is gone the, the floorboard collapsed i have two walls left what just happened now it becomes a uh, ticket now exilius gets it now exilius has to find out why this house yeah, can't yeah. be built which i don't mind good for him also it's a live server environment right once it's on the server and we change it back suddenly it's like to us the worst is Whenever we read any report of anyone lost anything, all red lights go on because that is the worst outcome possible. Yes. That you lose resources or structures you've built without understanding why it happened or worst case, it actually being a bug. And so let's say we do make a feature where you can put down blueprints in bulks and then suddenly something doesn't work and then there is a ceiling that structurally shouldn't be able to be put down. And then we put a fix out and suddenly that disappears. Like that thing breaks because we put that fix. That is really bad. And I think we'll do our last one actually directly from the chat. Grish actually has an idea, not a question, which is the idea of, I guess, a trader of recipes. I think it was an idea a long time ago. Mm -hmm. I guess he's Absolutely asking doable, for quite yeah. easy. I would say that that is more of a design question. I would then sit down with Ari and come up with a thing to make that a little more interesting, basically, where we say, hey, maybe they give you some, like, what do they give you back? What makes sense in our game design currently? Maybe 
recipes that you've already learned become kind of almost like a currency. You can trade them for a currency and that currency can then be traded into other recipes, something like that, so that it still makes sense to find these. I think that also ties into what you said earlier, the idea of being able to spend the things you have. Like I, I'm a hoarder. I collect things, even though I know they don't have purpose. Like I have so many twigs. I don't even, I don't need twigs, but you never know. Mm -hmm. And they're the easiest thing to get. Like you can fall on the ground and you get twigs, a hundred that you didn't want. But I keep them just in case because I think, what if one day I need these twigs for something? And if you're the starting player in the world, one of the first things that fills your inventory is twigs. And one of the biggest yeah, pieces yeah. of feedbacks that I have with streamers from Lurk It or my personal friends who have streamed is when you're first playing a game, this is not a corporate problem really. I think it's a social survival problem. Problem is when you first play a game, depending on how many things you have access to right away to gather, maybe if you have a list of 10 things, now it's a list of 50 things you have a chance of getting in yeah, one yeah. small area. You don't know what's important. So your first fear is what do I toss and what do I not toss? This and I also, I don't want to toss anything away. Like I, you give me something I wanted. It's yeah. a survival game. Yeah. Because then you're the asshole who's like, you know what? This doesn't look important. I tossed that. Why'd you toss that, bro? That's like one of the most important resources. You won't get that again for yeah, three yeah. days. So, yeah. I think it is currently one of the bigger problems of Corborn in general. I, we are working on a solution for just streamlining that better in the early game so that you understand better and it's easier for you to manage your inventory. Yeah. I'll do, I was going to say that's the last one, but actually Dr. Sharky, after this, no more, but we'll have a next stream. So look forward to it. And of course, post in the idea section as well. But Dr. Sharky finally spoke up and said, how hard is it to make chairs and beds interactable? Would be cool to have a rested buff, more stamina, increased healing for a few minutes. If you sat in your town or went to bed at night, Jesus, I agree so much. I love I... So, um... The easier things are actually the whole, you get a buff, something is happening, you interact with something, something happens. I don't think we do have that with not, not consumable, so we'd have to look into that, but let's just assume it is doable. One or two weeks of fiddling around with the code a little bit for the AP team, and then that could happen. There's more law slash logical questions that I would have. How this mechanic feels neither annoyingly mundane nor just say. so because let's say it's a life service game right like you cannot skip the night or anything so or life game so oh i click on the bed yeah. and then i just get the buff kind of lame to be honest and it also just means that i constantly have to run to this bed so if i build that doable I already know that four weeks later, you are going to ask me for something that makes it possible so that the buff lasts, buff lasts longer, so that it's easier to do that or whatever, which could be doable. Then I build more bets and give you better bets and a better bet gives a better buff and whatever. If I make it so that you lock out in the bed, which seems like the most logical solution, right? You lock out in the bed. If you stay out long enough, you come back online, you have that buff for yeah, time rest X. Yeah, buff. Cool. Completely new feature. I need an engineer. <laughs> that's just how game development works. It's like the best idea is generally not the easiest to achieve one. So it could be somewhere in the middle. Um, I could say, hey, you have to spend time X in the bed. I think Exilius, if you're still watching, you'll this will sound familiar <laughs> because that's the criticism I brought towards Exilius when he pitched that idea to me. I said, wow, that sounds like thrilling gameplay to lie in a bed for three minutes <laughs> to get that buff going because that just sucks. <clears throat> Basically, you keep Coreborn open in a window while you do tasking in another window until your five minutes is up and then tap back into Coreborn and keep playing. Or I'm one for all chaos. I say on a live service game, if you go to bed, the entire server goes to bed. If you were playing in nighttime, <laughs> everyone's in daytime now. <laughs> No matter what you were doing, someone slept. Sorry, guys. And that's that, that's one of the props. So absolutely doable. I'm not saying, the, again, the feature is absolutely doable. We would just come back with a suggestion of what is achievable. Still feels in line with the current game design, um, which will, by the top of my head, most likely be something like, hey, it's different bets. The better the bet is, the better the effect you get from it. Better beds require higher town levels, which is then also something that is actually like something you might want from it. And then, yeah, a rested buff is doable. You just have to click on a better bet, for example, 
And if you get that better bet, you have need to access to it, which is same as with other structures in your town. I would have to look into it, but that would most likely be something that is achievable by the Asia Pacific team. One of the things you mentioned earlier too, just to piggyback off this last question is there's no anim painter. So I would go back to the first part of the question too, which is one of the things that is not exclusive to Cherkietti, which let's get rid of the buff altogether. And just the idea of people who want to RP just by laying down in the bed, uh, mm -hmm. animation thing. So I guess on a macro level, not for the Asian Pacific team, the macro level, how doable is that? I mean, I would outsource that basically like uh, that's so Maybe we didn't mention it. the Asia Pacific team does have the potential to outsource things. It is very much not desirable to do that because it immediately means that I take resources from a part of our company or externally that was originally not planned for us. Still, we decided as a company that that team will get an outsourcing budget. So the animation, the character lying down to sleep and getting back up is the animation I need to outsource. I would say it doesn't sound mega complex, but it's complex enough. We would outsource that. So that is doable, but it would require Asia Pacific team external work. Okay. <clears throat> Very but cool. Basically means that I need to get the references, which is my job in this team. Like we, I, I help with the design, then I get the references. I do the briefing for the outsourcing. In that case, so it sounds weird, but outsourcing also means asking people in the company that are not part of the Asia Pacific team. So I would ask our animator many and say, hey, can you do this? I would get that approved from our production. So basically, Renee and Malia would say, hey, cool, we can get that in this and that week. And that is why outsourcing is a problem. Because let's say Manny is currently working on something else, then I might have to wait four to six weeks to get his time, which just delays the feature. So I will always try to write it out there. I get something where I do not need that animation or already have it. In that case, I don't think there's a way around that animation, to be honest. Then we'll take credit for it. We'll outsource it to Manny, bring it back to the Asia Pacific team, and then say, hey, everyone, look what we did. We told you we'd bring you the animation for the bed. We did it. Congrats. Yeah, great idea. Great question. Uh, I think that'll probably wrap it up for the first edition. We've been going hot for about an hour and 18 minutes right now. And yep. I think all of you have a generally good idea of what's going to happen. This will be, as we said, a bi-weekly frequency right now. So expect this stream back in two weeks at a one hour earlier start time, which would mm -hmm. be 6.45 p.m. Pacific, 9.45 p.m. Eastern. Eastern time and uh, 4 a.m. CET. Yes. Which will also be 1145 uh, p.m. JST. I'm um, a.m. JST. There you go. Time zones. Hell yeah. Good times. But that's a breakdown of it. And of course, next time, less time is spent on these first parts. Next time is all ideas. So if you're watching the VOD, if you're in the stream later on, if you're in the Discord, show up and get all your ideas there right to us and of course if not i'll be gathering the ideas in discord and presenting them and if you can't make it and no one has any ideas to the present we'll just talk about them publicly here's some ideas i've gathered coming from someone like we just did today and then yeah, bring about i'll them. also throw my ideas in there if, if no one gives me ideas i'll just do my own 4 a.m cet is a great time dr sharky's up i mean get some coffee in you you'll be fine also, it is asynchronous, right? Like if you just don't happen to be online, watch the video on YouTube, throw your ideas in the comments, throw them in the Discord. This is just the best time where you get the explanation of why certain ideas were developed into something else or whatever. And I would love to in two weeks already be able to, hey, here's some of the ideas that came back or here's some what we developed them in. We're now internally discussing them and here then next week or in two weeks we can vote on them because we are still working on farming right now. As I said, test servers are coming most likely next week. Um, yeah, and this is an experiment. If yep. you guys don't care about the ability to directly basically influence the game that we all love, then that's absolutely fine. <laughs> like, no bitterness on my end, but it would be a learning. And if you love it, cool, we can potentially even grow this and say, hey, seems like that that there's a huge interest in that, that the features coming out of that are actually really helping. Let us know. Cool. Good feedback. Uh, give, me, give me five seconds. Hold on. Just got to do this. 
All right. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, we did it. Uh, do you have anything else you want to add before we close this up? No, just thank you. Um, I think this was all. The whole idea was born from a new Adrian sent around that dock full of community ideas. And I went over them and I had to just say, and that, that sounds so mundane, there was not a single bad idea among those. And I felt like this, most of them, of course, we discussed at some point. It's not like we are blind to these ideas or we didn't have them, but I think it opened my eyes a little bit to, it is so important to sometimes try to see the game from the perspective of the other side and we very often try to explain our perspective. Hey, this is what developing feels like. This is where we are standing. But I think it's also super important as a developer to try to see it from the other person's perspective, from the player's perspective. Like this is what currently is missing and why it must be frustrating that something isn't coming. Why can I not teleport between my towns yet? Why can't I sleep in a bed? Stuff like that. And I think it's just super important to not always try to come up with the best reply to that, but sometimes with a natural answer. And the answer might sometimes be just giving players what they wanted or telling them, hey, this is when I am able to give it to you. And I think that was very eye-opening. And it seems so obvious, but sometimes in the gist of working in so many complex, gigantic features on such a big game, you just kind of forget that, hey, sometimes it's the little things. Yeah. And the little things are made by the little people here in, in our little team. I couldn't agree more. Uh, it harkened me back to the Q&A videos you used to do. And now this is partially Q&A and it's Q&A and idea. And I think this is transparently, it's a nice connection between the community team, the dev team, the Asia Pacific team, and most importantly, the community. It's a clear line of sight. It's an open mic night yeah, every yeah. two weeks. It's not just like you said, it's not a question and answer. It's not a post and then get an answer back or a post and I'll take it to this person and come back to you. It's yeah, yeah. we're all here, get out in the open and you can guarantee you'll see us back in two weeks or later on in a month with your answers and the expectations of what you brought forth. And so when it's developed or made or not, you can say, hey, I was a part of that. I helped that come to life because that was my idea. It's what yeah, I yeah. wanted. And it's what we wanted because you voted on it. So everyone gets what they want. That's the point. And I think that is a good point because like, be like, think too big. We care about the restraints. You do not need to care. If your idea is that you want a gigantic flying spaceship that yes. shoots lasers into the map. Yes. I, cool. If that is your idea, share it with us. I'll do my best to make that into something that is actually doable. Ideally involve a little bit why you want it or what made you come up with the idea because it just helps it helps understanding like with the teleport what do you actually want do you want to be at point a or point b as fast as possible do you want to be able to bring resources from point a to b what i don't need from you is excessive design thinking about this that how should you know it's just impossible because like i don't even know in most cases what's doable and what isn't on that note as we close out thank you for your time and uh, thank you, every everyone who showed up and everyone who will be replying later on. We'll get to your comments, questions, and ideas. Thank you for participating. I will leave by asking Halka one question. Since you are the mastermind, the lore, the pen and paper behind UltraCore, which is, if there was a giant spaceship with lasers and thrusters and eradication beams, is that enough to take out Sorgoth or Devour? I have seen some concept art, but like, is that, a is that enough? Depends on the spaceship. I was. Let's just say. Okay. <laughs> Sorgoth, <laughs> Let's so, just say. Sorgoth okay. is not called the World Eater because he just visits and get dis gets destroyed. <laughs> That's a reputation that travels with him, and it comes from eating whole worlds. Ah. And that you are not the first world <laughs> to encounter Sorgoth, and if you don't do the necessary things you might not be the last world that ever encounters Sorgoth. And you might not be the first to come up with a technology that holds them back. But so far, you've at least come up with a shield that seems to protect you. Maybe work on that idea further before building spaceships. <laughs> that's, that's a really good answer. <laughs> I'll take it. Thanks, dude. <laughs> Appreciate it. Everyone, thank, thank you, you for so watching. Much.
and we'll see you next time in two weeks. Be in the Discord. We can find you. Hearts. Goodbye. Hey, you're at the end of the video. You know what that means, right? Like, comment, subscribe. Subscribe's right here. Really easy. And, uh, playlist right here, I think.